To build your custom database, you first find the custom database that is already downloaded when you install the Classification Manager for Revit. Inside my Windows Explorer, I'm going to go to my C Drive, Program Files 86, Autodesk, AIT, the release year 2024 in this case, and then the resource folder. Inside this folder, you'll find all the databases that come when you install the program. One of these is the custom one, the Classification Manager database. This is the one that I'm going to open up and modify to make my own custom database. I strongly recommend that you make a copy of this file as opposed to mo modifying the original. So I'm simply going right to right click on this and say copy and then go to my database folder that I want to put it in and paste it in there. Once I have it copied, I'm going to go ahead and rename this, this file so that I uh, understand which one I'm working with. So I'm simply going to right click on this and rename this. And I'm just going to call it uh, dash SDT. And then I'm going to go ahead and open up this file. When you open up this custom database, the first tab that appears once it's open is the instruction tab. The instruction tab tells you how to use this file. It gives you definitions of terms in here. For example, what is a contact? What is a facility? What is a space? Um, it, uh, and it gives you instructions of how to use this, this file. It also has on this first tab the Revit family category codes. And these are very important. So, so depending on what we're trying to create a classification for, the particular family uh, category is listed here along with the code that Revit uses. So we'll come back and copy and paste these codes as we need them as we create different classifications. I'm trying to create um, some, add some information about zones um, to my spaces. And so I will use the spaces tab down here at the bottom to create my custom list. On this tab at the top, you'll see that it has some information um, uh, like title, description, version, function, uh, number parameter. I'm going to simply fill this information in. For the title, I will simply call this zone. And for the description, I'm going to come down and type in um, zone information. For the version, you can have multiple versions of this. I'm just going to call this 1.0. And the function is for spaces. I'm trying to apply this, this cat classification to spaces in my Revit model. So I will leave the function as space. And then the parameter name and the, uh, the description, I mean, the, the number parameter and the description parameter are very important. Um, this is what Revit is going to assign these classifications to inside your Revit model. So these two uh, parameters, they do need to be created inside your Revit project. This is not going to create these parameters. Um, it's going to assume that these parameters are already available inside your Revit model. So I will simply call this um, the number parameter. I'm going to call it zone underscore number. And for the name, I'm simply going to call it uh, zone underscore name. For the zone number, I'm going to type in 0 .001 for the first zone. And then for the uh, zone information, I will simply call this north zone. The level for this is going to create a hierarchy in the listing of these classifications. So at the top of the hierarchy will be the zone information. Below that, I'm going to have this first zone, this north zone. So I'm going to classify this as a level two hierarchy. I'm going to come back and fill in the Revit category in just a second, but this is where we're going to copy and paste that code from the instructions tab. For the next uh, entry, I'm going to go ahead and put in point uh, 
0,1A and simply make a subdivision um, of the north zone. So I will call this uh, north zone area A. And I want this to be below or underneath the north zone. So I will give this a level three uh, hierarchy. Let me go ahead and create a couple more in here. I'll do 0 0, uh, 1, 1 b and simply call this North Zone Area B. And again, this will be the same hierarchy as the Area A, so this will be a number three. And then let's create a West Zone as well. So let me do a 0 0 0.002 and call this West Zone. And this is back on the same level as the as the uh, the north zone. So this is going to get a hierarchy level of two. And then let me create two subcategories underneath that as well. So 0 0.002A. And this will be west zone area A. And again, this will be a hierarchy three. And this 0 0.002B will be the west zone area B. And again, this will be a hierarchy of three. So again, as far as the Revit category, this, um, this is going to be that code number. So let me go back to my instructions tab and I'm gonna scroll down in, into these codes and find um, the category that I'm, that I'm trying to assign these for. And in this case, it's spaces. And so I'm gonna go down, go down until I find spaces and simply find the code, and I'm going to uh, copy this. I'm going to do a control C on that code, and then go back to my spaces tab and simply do a control V to copy that code in. I'm going to go ahead and just pull this down and, and fill in all these with the same code um, since they all apply to spaces. Now that I've made those changes, I'm going to go ahead and save this file. And once it's saved, I'm going to go ahead and close it. And it's important that you close this file because you cannot load this database into your Revit session while it's open. So make sure you close it. With this closed, now I'm going to go into Revit and simply load in my custom database. To do this, I'm gonna go up and find the Interoperability Tools tab, and then underneath the Standardized Data panel, I'm going to simply click on Assign Classification. In the Assign Classification, dialog box, over on the left, we have our different databases. At the very bottom is our pick list. Our pick list is the one that we, we're, we can load in a custom database. And for this, I'm gonna go, once we pick on that, I'm gonna go up to the settings to allow me to load in a new pick list. Once I'm there, I'm simply gonna hit the browse button and browse and find my custom database. Once I've loaded it, I simply say OK. And then it takes me back to my pick list where I need to click here to actually load this database into this project. Once I load it, I, th I then can um, begin using this database. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. And to actually start using this, I need to have an element selected. In this case, I'm going to come down and pick on, on one of my spaces. So I'll pick on this cafe space and then go back up to my interoperability tools, back to assign classification. And now when I go down to pick list, it will list out my custom database that we created. So I can see my north zone. In the, in the north zone area A and B, and my west zone, and my west zone area A and B. To assign this, I'm simply gonna pick on my north zone area A and come down and pick on assign. Once I assign it, I'm gonna go ahead and close this dialog box and show you that now, and with the space still selected, I can look into my properties and I can see that that information has been assigned here for the zone name and the zone number. I'm gonna go back into the interoperability tools under the assigned classification once again to talk about one more feature that's in here. 
If I go back to my pick list and go back to my settings, it's going to remember the database that I currently have loaded. But if I go up to settings and load a new database, it's going to list out a section in here for my library. It's got a public library and it's got my library. If I want to control what's listed in my library, I can go up underneath the options and underneath my pick list, I can add a path to the folder that contains my databases. And when I do this, I'm going to pick on my database folder and add that path. Now, when I go back to my pick list, I will see my two databases that are listed there under my library. So this is a quick shortcut so you don't have to browse and find your database every time. You can just quickly pick them off the list if that's, if that's the one you want to load. So with that, I can continue going through this and picking on my additional spaces that we have in there and assigning the correct zone information to those spaces. Lastly, I want to show you what happens when you do make a change to your database. I'm simply going to close out of this, go back to my Excel file and reopen my database. So let me reopen the database. Once I have this reopen, I want to make some changes to it. And the specific changes that I want to make to my database is I want to add some alternate zone information. Maybe you have a particular project that has different zone information and you want to assign different classifications. So I'm simply going to come down to my spaces tab and we're going to make a copy of this tab. So I'm going to right click on that and say move or copy and check the create the copy option and come down and it's going to create me a spaces two. You can rename this to whatever you want to. I'll just leave it as spaces two. That's fine. Um, but in this particular one, I'm going to come up and change the title of this to be zone. And then I'm going to put in alternate. I can come down and change all the information that I want, any of the information that I want to change and uh, make new zone information. Uh, with this, I'm going to go ahead and just hit the save button and save this and then go ahead and close out of my database and go back to my Revit session and go back into my assigned classifications and inside my pick list, there is an option to under the setting uh, icon to reload the database. So I'm going to reload the database. It's going to refresh it. And now that I've got it refreshed, if you want to see that alternate zone, now we have a drop down in here that says zone and zone alternate. Um, so now we can use the, the alternate zones if we need to.